In this video, let's take a look at the continued fraction of the square root of 2. And to start this, let's write the square root of 2 as being equal to 1 plus the square root of 2 minus 1. And then we can take a closer look at the square root of 2 minus 1. So rewriting this, root 2 minus 1. We write it as a fraction. We can multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of 2 plus 1. And by doing that, the top will end up with a difference of 2 squares. So we have the square root of 2 squared, which is 2 minus 1 squared. And this is divided by root 2 plus 1. So this simplifies to 1 divided by 1 plus root 2. So now we know that the square root of 2 is 1 plus this expression here, which we know is equal to this. So root 2 is 1 plus 1 over 1 plus root 2. And what we can do from here, since we have a square root of 2 in this denominator, we know that the square root of 2 is equal to this entire thing here. So we can substitute all of this in for the square root of 2 in this denominator. So the square root of 2 is equal to 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus this whole expression here, 1 plus 1 over 1 plus root 2. And now we can just simplify. 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1 is 2 plus 1 over 1 plus root 2. Now we'll just do the exact same thing with this square root of 2 by substituting this expression here. So we now have that the square root of 2 is equal to 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 1 plus, and now we're making the substitution of 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus root 2. And again, we'll simplify this to 1 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1 divided by we have 1 plus 1, which is 2, plus 1 divided by 1 plus root 2. And you can start to see a pattern now. If we did it again, where we substitute essentially this expression for the square root of 2, down here we'd end up with 2 plus 1 over 1 plus root 2. And so from this, we can just write the general expression. So the square root of 2 is equal to 1 plus 1 divided by 2 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 plus, and this just keeps going on forever. And it's important to note that if you have an infinitely long continued fraction expansion of a number, then you know that that number is an irrational number. And this makes sense, considering we already know that the square root of 2 is irrational. And one way that you can represent continued fractions is the square root of 2 is equal to 1 semicolon. So you only put a semicolon after the first number, and that would be this number here. And then you just write these numbers here. So for the square root of 2, we would have 2, comma, 2, comma, 2, comma, 2, and so on. That goes on forever. And for instance, a number like e, you can represent as 2, semicolon, 1, comma, 2, comma, 1, comma, 1, comma, 4, comma, 1, comma, 1, comma, 6, and we would have 1, comma, 1, comma, 8 after that. And it just keeps going on forever. And the nice thing about this representation is that you can actually see some kind of pattern with an irrational number, which you wouldn't get with the normal decimal expansion. And you might ask why this is worth doing, expanding a number into its continued fraction. And one thing we can do with this is essentially truncate it wherever we'd like. So we can cut it off here and just add up this expression and that will give us a great rational approximation to whatever the continued fraction is equal to. So in our case, if we truncate it here, it would give a good approximation to the square root of 2. 
and the further down we truncate it the better that approximation will be so for instance cutting it off here the square root of two is approximately equal to one plus one over two plus one half and simplifying this we have one plus one divided by this expression here is five halves so we have one over five halves and one over five halves is just two fifths so one plus two fifths is equal to seven fifths and if you write the square root of two as a decimal you'll see more clearly that this is actually a pretty good approximation so the square root of two as a decimal is equal to one point four one four two one and that goes on forever and seven fifths is simply one point four and this number is what we would call a convergent of the square root of two. So each step where we could cut it off, we would call that number a convergent once we simplify it. And so the convergence of the square root of two, we can write as one, three halves, seven fifths, 17 twelfths, and so on. And like I said, the further down we cut off this continued fraction, the better these convergence will approximate the square root of 2. So to see that, let's take this 239 divided by 169. And if we write this as a decimal, this is actually approximately equal to 1.414201. And you can see that compared to the square root of 2, it just differs in this decimal place, so it's a very close approximation to the square root of 2.